Hello everyone, Chad here. Today we're going to learn about duty cycle and pulse width modulation on the Arduino Uno. But before we begin, let's first discuss the tools that will be needed for this tutorial. The Arduino Uno, which you can get from sparkfun.com for about 30 bucks. Here there are two editions. the dual inline package version of the ATmega328 and the surface mount edition. You also need a multimeter that is capable of reading DC volts. Since the multimeter I borrowed from a friend doesn't have the small leads that are, ne that are needed to insert it into the Arduino headers, I also purchased some 22 gauge wire. This wire has a solid core and is stiff and allows and can be easily inserted into the Arduino headers. Last, you'll need an Arduino IDE. Since I'm using Ubuntu, I just got it from the software center. Let's get started. In the previous video, we left off with a cliffhanger, and that was if we modulate the voltage between high and low as fast as the microcontroller is capable of, what would be the voltage reading on the multimeter? Recall, in this while loop, we are alternating between low and high with e each iteration step. We also had a zero second delay between each iteration. However, there is an ever so slight delay between each voltage step which is due to the delay of running the code on a 16 megahertz microcontroller. Therefore, the pulse width is also slightly greater than zero. Let's upload this code to the Arduino and see what happens. Now, with the code uploaded to the board, let's try to reason what will happen. When the voltage is set to low, there will be a zero volt differential between pin 13 and ground. Likewise, high will produce 5 volts. Therefore, half the time will be at 0 volts, the other half at 5. We also know that the speed of the microcontroller is finite, as well as the speed of electricity itself, in that all the surface components, leads, and the materials of this board have their own electrical characteristics. Not only is this true for the Arduino, but also to the load that is attached to it, in our case, the multimeter. Let's take apart the multimeter to see what other components may be accounted for. As we can see here, resistors, capacitors, transistors, and LCD on the back side, as well as various other components. Viewers from the previous video had given a guess to what the voltage would be. Let's hear yours. Well, according to this multimeter, it is approximately 2.5 volts. In this case, 2.5 volts coincides with the average of 0 and 5 volts. Now, let's go back to the code and change the low and high pulse width. In our example, the pulse was low half of the time and high the other half. But what happens if we don't want the voltage to be exactly high 50% of the time, but 25, 75, or some other percentile of our choosing. Enter the term duty cycle. Duty cycle refers to the period of time the voltage is high divided by the total cycle or period. Here, on Wikipedia, 
the relationship is expressed as d equals tau over t, where tau is the duration of high and t is a total cycle or period. Here on Arduino's website, we see five examples of varying duty cycles from 0% to 100% duty cycle. What duty cycle do you think we were running at? That's correct, 50% duty cycle. Now, let's go back to the Arduino integrated development environment and modify the code to support any user-defined duty cycle. We are going to start with the square wave code from the previous video. First, in the global variable declaration section, we're going to add a floating point value called duty cycle and set it to 75%. Next, we're going to break up the global delay into an independent delay for each high and low step. This requires us to define a total cycle. So let's make a small square waveform period of 1,000 seconds. 1,000, excuse me, 1,000 milliseconds, or one second. Now, let's make 75% of this second incurred at the high voltage level, or more generally, duty cycle. Next, we need a delay for the low voltage step. However, this code alone will not work, as the delay will be equal for both high and low. Instead, we need to be 25% low and 75% high, which would be 1 minus 75% or more generally, duty cycle. You will find the updated code included below this video. Take a guess, what will be the voltage on a 0 to 5 volt square waveform at a 75% duty cycle? Let's find out if you're right. With the 75% duty cycle code running, let's check the voltage. 3.69, or approximately 3.75. If you guess 3.75 volts, you are correct. This is because 5 times 0.75 is 3.75. Pop quiz! What will be the voltage level on a 0 to 5 volt square waveform at a 25% duty cycle? Go ahead and pause the video and work it out for yourself. You're wrong, viewer. The correct answer is approximately 1.25 volts because 5 volts times 0.25 is 1.25. Oh, what? Oh, sorry. Well, speak up next time. I can't hear you. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and verify that on your Arduino, a 1% duty cycle gives close to 0 volts, and a 99% duty cycle gives close to 5 volts. With the duty cycle experimentation complete, Let's paint a picture in our minds about the relationship between duty cycle and its effect on voltage. When the duty cycle was 1%, the resulting voltage was close to 0 volts. As the pulse width increased, so did the resulting voltage. In other words, the pulse width of the high voltage step controlled the voltage output. Enter the term pulse width modulation. Let's, just, let's see what Wikipedia has to say. Pulse width modulation, 
or pulse duration modulation, is a commonly used technique for controlling power to inertial electrical devices. The PWM switching frequency has to be much faster than what would affect the load, which is to say the device uses the power. Typical switching has to be done several times a minute in electrical stove, 120 hertz in electrical dimmer, and so on. What does this mean? Let's do some experimentation to find out. Recall, from the last video, this multimeter was able to display the voltage correctly when the square waveform had a two second cycle. Let's try it for a one second cycle or 1000 milliseconds. Thus, for this load, a PWM switching frequency of 1 Hz or 1 cycle per second would not make it an effective voltage regulator. This is because the voltage is stepping up and down too rapidly. Now, let's reduce the cycle in order of magnitude to 100 milliseconds or 10 Hz. Uploading the code now. Thus, a PWM switching frequency of 10 Hz might make an effective voltage regulator for this load. This is because the average voltage appears fairly constant. Now that we know what PWM is, let's look at how to calculate the average volts. Here, on Wikipedia, we find an equation that will give us the average value of a waveform. In our case, the y-axis represents volts and the x-axis represents time, where a waveform, or voltage depth, is in blue. The average is given by 1 divided by our period times the definite integral between 0 and T of our voltage steps. Or in other words, the area that resides under the blue curve between 0 and T. Applying calculus, or possibly geometry, we arrive at the answer of duty cycle times the high voltage step plus 1 minus the duty cycle times the low voltage step. Let's revisit the original code and see if there's any ways we can improve upon it. Once the Arduino is up and running, we are placed into an infinite while loop. And for each voltage step change, we incur a delay where no other processing can take place during this delay. Basically, these delays turn the entire Arduino Uno into a single voltage regulator. There must be a better way to write this code. Let's go look at the Arduino board to see if we can gather any ideas. And sure enough, looking at the Arduino board, we see the symbol PWM. Let's read Arduino's website to find out more. Here we have the analog write function, which, which writes an analog value, or PWM wave, to a pin. After the call to the analog write, the pin will generate a steady square wave of the specified duty cycle until the next call to analog write, digital read, or digital write. The frequency of the PWM signal is approximately 490 hertz. Sounds like something we could use. Let's look at the syntax. Here, analog write requires two values, pin and the value to write to it. Let's see if we could put this code to use. It's time to update this code using the analog write function. There is no need to write PWM code ourselves so we will remove this hack. And 
Now we will add the analog write function with the user's defined pin and some percentage of the maximum. 255 is the maximum so we'll take 75% of it or more, gener more generally the percentage defined by duty cycle. As we see in the Arduino documentation pin 13 is not capable of doing PWM but 11 was. In reviewing the updated code it is important to notice that additional tasks can now be performed. Now, not only is the Arduino a limited voltage regulator, but also maintains the ability to execute other complex tasks. Time to upload this code and check the results. First, we need to switch from pin 13 to pin 11. Notice that the voltage is close to 3.75. Additionally, observe how smooth and stable the voltage is. Recall, this is because the Arduino PWM signal is approximately 490 Hz. Let's switch out the current load, that is, the multimeter, for a 12 volt directed current motor. See, that's with 3.75 volts. Now, let me modify the computer to make it for 5 volts. Uploading that. It appears that this motor can operate under a 490 hertz PWM signal. Well, that about wraps up this tutorial. Wait, wait. By the way, can you help me? I'm having some troubles getting a different type of motor to work. It's called a stepper motor. When voltage is applied, this motor seems to only move in small steps. Watch the blue flag closely. See? It moved, but then it stopped immediately, even though there's 5 volts still being applied. Let's switch the polarity. See, it reverses a step in the other direction, but then it stops immediately. Can anyone help me figure out how to get the stepper motor to complete one revolution? Leave your recommendations below. Till next time, keep exercising your software and hardware freedoms. This is Chad, signing out.